Love this podcast? Consider supporting this show. You decide how much you give and there's no regular commitment. Visit the link in the episode description to support now. You are now listening to Your Life, the Mixtape. This week, I am joined by a multi Emmy Award winning actor and producer. You know him from NBC's This Is Us, NBC's Days of Our Lives, MTV's Teen Wolf, Disney's Cloud Nine, and The Bay on Peacock and Amazon. Please welcome the incomparable, the iconic, the amazingly talented Mr. Mike Manning. Hello. Hey, how's it going? That was a that was a pretty generous intro. So thanks for that. <laughs> it's it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so fan of music, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, my father, growing up, um, I grew up in Colorado, um, but my dad, like ever since I was a kid, um, ever since he was, I think he was thirteen when he first started. Um, he had his first band. But he would always, he was like a businessman. So he would work during the week. And then on the weekends, he would play in a couple bands that he was in. So I sort of had that. And, and in like my entire basement, we had a drum set, we had guitars, we had pianos, we had everything. So I sort of have always had a bit of a musician's, you know, lifestyle um, through my dad kind of for my whole life. That's amazing. I love that. So this should be right up your alley. Um, yeah. Tell me, what is the last song that you listened to? The last song that I listened to while I was, I was like making my coffee this morning, dancing around in the kitchen. I listened to um, Santana, Oye Como Va. Nice. Excellent yeah. song. Mm-hmm. And so That's on this, um, if anybody's looking for a new playlist, there's a Spotify playlist called Pre-Party 2022. And it just, I don't know who made it, but it, um, of course it says their name, but it's the, it's the best. It, it takes like a bunch of oldies that we love and then it remixes them or it just has random, you know, like Santana or some others that I wouldn't be first on my playlist, but I'm like, oh man, I love this song. Why do I don't, not listen to this uh, more than I do? So it's, if anybody's looking for a new, new uh, playlist, it's pre-party 2022 is my new favorite. I'm going to, I'm going to check that out when we're done with this. Do it. It's, it's pretty great. Who is an artist that you feel like everybody should be listening to? So I have a friend uh, named Jamie Miller. He was on The Voice in 2017, The Voice UK. He's this Welsh singer. And if people like, uh, if people like artists that just belt it out and just like have a really, like a Bruno Mars type range, um, he's uh, an artist that, is gaining traction. Um, he's on tour, I think, right now. But I think he's get, he's about to blow up in the next like year or two. Nice. I'm going to check him out, too. Taking notes. There you go. <laughs> so taking it back a little bit, um, what's the first song that you remember hearing? So I used to spend a lot of time in Florida with my grandparents, and my grandpa was obsessed with john denver and mary poppins and that's how he would wake us up in the morning so he would either play like a spoonful of sugar at the top of like the speaker the stereo or he would play sunshine on my shoulders by john denver um uh, or like thank god i'm a country boy by john denver whatever john denver song he was feeling at the moment so i, I would probably say like john denver is probably the first artist and and the first couple songs that i i remember hearing that's awesome not an, not enough John Denver on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like well, there we go. I'm bringing I'm bringing the sunshine on my shoulders to you. Excellent. What is the song that you always put on when you're like in your feelings? Um, I put on "Don't Want to Miss a Thing" by Aerosmith. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I just think that it's such a good song. I mean, Aerosmith is is one of my favorite bands they're just they're just amazing like so many hits after hits after hits um and then specifically with that song i don't want to miss a thing um i remember it during that movie armageddon 
And it's where they're all like saying goodbye to their families and saying how much they love each other. And I just remember watching that with my family and that song comes on and I like, everybody's crying. Everybody's like telling each other how much they love each other. And so I feel like that song just takes me back right to that moment. That's fantastic. Yeah. On the flip side of that, uh, what's the song that when it comes on, you're immediately in a good mood? Hands down. Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful World. Nice. Excellent. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's like one of those, like, it comes on and you just have to stop what you're doing and just sing along. Absolutely. For you, uh, what is what is the best song to sing in the shower? I feel like I have different songs for different moods. But I would say my constant is probably Walking in Memphis by Mark Cohn. That is one of my favorite songs of all time. There we go. Greg, I feel like we're getting along pretty well here. Absolutely. We're, you know, by the time this is over, we're going to be best friends. We're going to be best friends. <laughs> that is, it's going to happen. What is the song that you feel like best summarizes what love is i'm a pretty big fan of alicia's alicia keys no one i feel like yes. she, she just like she just gets it she just captures it That's... or the the what's that song i like me better when i'm with you um, oh by lauf yeah I, don't know. I would say that's a close second excellent yes those are those are both very very solid answers okay I'll t- thank you <laughs> You're, you're winning so far. Okay, in, great, in, great. In this game with no, no points and no competition, you're absolutely winning. Yeah, yeah, great. It's like that game on, uh, what is it, Big Daddy? Let's, let's, let's play I win. How do you play? Yes. I win. <laughs> absolutely that. So on the flip side of that question, um, what's the best breakup song? I would have to go with Hot Girl Bummer by, or no, Hot Girl, yeah, Hot Girl Bummer by Black Bear. Nice. Excellent. You're bringing up some songs I haven't thought about in a minute. Yeah, I feel like that was just one that like, I was like, who's Black Bear? And then he came on and I was like, I heard it everywhere. And, I, and usually I hate when ra- the radio overplays a song It's and it's everywhere. And you're like, man, I used to love this song, but now it's getting on my nerves. That was one that was played everywhere. And every time it came on, I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't mind it. Like, I, I'll listen to it again. Exactly. And, you know, with with the with the advent of of TikTok, it, it becomes if I hear this song one more time, I'm just I'm going to put my phone in the trash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is a song that absolutely every time it's on, it has to be played at max volume? Um, can I do like a. Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. Can we get, can we do that? Absolutely, we can. This all is right, your mixtape. Right. We can do anything you want. All right, we're doing Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. I had to put some thought into that one because there's so many, but I feel like it's Sweet Emotion. Excellent. That's fantastic. I love that song also. See, best friends. Best friends. We need a handshake next. Yes. What is the greatest song from a film soundtrack? So I was obsessed with this movie when it came out. I think it was like the late 90s, Men in Black. My brother and I were both obsessed. And I remember we bought the Will Smith Men in Black. Was it like a single or an album or whatever? I think it was like one of our first CDs that we got. And we had those, our little boom boxes in our rooms and we would play it so loud and we would rap. And we thought we were so cool. <laughs> and we would like put our black shades on and, and whatever. So I feel like I feel like that sort of stuck with me of like, Men in Black, Will Smith. Hell yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Start to finish, what film has the greatest soundtrack? Not only my favorite film, but my, my, the film with my favorite soundtrack is Gladiator by Hans Zimmer. Oh, that is fantastic. And only the second time uh, that something by Hans Zimmer has been mentioned on this show. So what? well done. Your question, yeah. you've asked other people about soundtracks and they haven't mentioned Hans Zimmer. 
one other person. What about, what about what about John Williams? Has anybody mentioned John Williams? Um, the same person that mentioned uh, Hans Zimmer mentioned John Williams. Okay, were they were they like a somebody like a movie person? Uh, actually, a musician. Okay, okay, I'll take that. I feel like I feel like musicians would mention other musicians, but that's interesting that they mentioned Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Williams. I went to a, a show at the Hollywood Bowl and it was uh, John Williams as uh, conducting some of his music from different movies over the decades, however long it's been. And um, and they showed Indiana Jones without music. And then they showed that same clip with music. And it was just night and day. It was amazing. And then Steven Spielberg comes out and he talks about the importance of music in movies and how he thinks that music, the score does half the job for him. And it was cool. It was like such a cool reminder of how powerful music is and how it just evokes emotion out of us. And, and, uh, and, and it's coming from Spielberg. So you're like, okay, I believe you. Right. That's if, if it came out of Spielberg's mouth, that's absolutely gospel. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What television show has the best theme song? Okay, so I'm going to say Bad Things by on True Blood. Oh, nice. And, I, and it, it's so funny because like, it wasn't a show that I watched all the time, but I, friends watched it, so I would watch it with them. And every time it came on, they would be like, they would want to fast forward. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, we have to listen <laughs> to the whole song. It's like, it's just such a sexy like sexy song that you don't you wouldn't think of for a t like a tv show but you're like you listen to it you're like oh this is perfect yeah what is the best song from a disney film hands down i just can't wait to be king by lion king on lion king excellent answer yeah yeah i have some friends and and like when we drink sometimes we'll just like turn on disney songs and like sing them at the top of our lungs in the kitchen and everybody I feel like that song, because it has like, what is it like Timon and Pumbaa talk about like they have like a little thing or what? Oh, no, wait, I'm, I'm mixing it up. Lion King is our favorite movie to do that to because it has we have like a Timon, a Pumbaa, a Zazu, uh, whatever. And everybody has like their parts and you have like a bunch of people in their 20s and 30s dancing around a kitchen singing Disney at the top of their lungs. That is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. What is the song that no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, this song comes on, you're going to dance to it? You know, like, I really want to have a cool answer where you're like, oh, man, like, that's a great answer. But I have to be honest on this one. I don't even know what she says, but Missy Elliott in that song, Work It, every time that song comes on, I drop everything I'm doing and I have to, like, just dance around. Cause it's that song where she like speaks backwards or whatever. Yeah. You know? She's like, is your for minute is brand yet? Is your, and she like, whatever it is. And I'm just like, Missy, I don't even know what you're saying, but like, good job. I can't, I can't help but dance. Do you want to know what she says on that part? Oh, what doesn't she say something but backwards? What does she say? Put that thing down, flip it and reverse it. Ah, but backwards. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's backwards. Yeah, there we go. Okay, the more you know. And also, to your credit, that is a cool answer. Okay, good. All right, I just want to keep my my A plus <laughs> record with this. I, I I just want to be your best friend. I mean, we're we're there, man. We're okay. we're best friends. <laughs> cool. What is the song that means the most to you? Not necessarily because of the song itself. The song could be shit. More uh, because of like the memories you have attached to it. So piggybacking on my, like my dad being in a band since I was younger. And like when we grew up, like my birthday present when I was like 13 was a drum set. And then my brother was a drummer. And then like in high school, we had a high school band and we won Battle of the Bands. And we would sing like, we would do mashups of like classic rock songs and one of our favorites was carry on my wayward son by kansas nice. and i just remember i just had these memories of like my dad my brother and i like jamming in the basement screaming the lyrics to carry on my wayward son to 
together. And it's just like such a cool time in my life that I would have to say that one. Hell yeah. That's awesome. What song is the ultimate party anthem? So I'm thinking when you say party, I'm thinking of like Vegas pool party where everybody's just like hanging out in the sun, like feet in the pool. And then the song comes on and everybody just starts like jumping up and down. Like that's the kind of party I'm envisioning. So for that, I would say I'm not sorry by Hardwell and Mike Williams. Nice. That yes, I agree. Yeah. For that situation. (laughs) That's the vibe. What artist makes the most appearances on your playlists? I would have to say, not because, I mean, I love their music. I love their music and have so much respect for them. Not because it's what I listen to the most, but because they have so many songs, I would have to say the Beatles. Nice. Yeah. Just because like every, like I've hearted every one of their songs. So it always just pops up on my playlist. And they do have one of the more expansive catalogs. So it's, yeah. it's a little unavoidable sometimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who is an artist that is considered to be a one hit wonder, but that you feel like should have been bigger? I really wish that I, I knew what came next from Chumbawamba. That song. That's like nice. The, 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 what is it? Tub thug pig whatever it's yeah. that song that goes like i get knocked down um it was just such a cool song and i'm like man what else would they have done if they would have been given like hey here's whatever you need to make another album they um i i had that album and there were listening back to it there were other tracks on that album that i would have released first and then thrown tub thumping out there. Tub thumping, that's it. okay. And then, you know, maybe they would have had some longevity, but, you know. Got it. See, they needed you. They needed to go on this and have an interview with you, and then you spark that idea, and then it would that's have changed right. the course of history. That's it'd right. Be, it'd be Chumbawamba instead of the Beatles, as most played on my playlist. There we go. See? See? What is the song that reminds you of home? So it has to be, uh, piggybacking on the other question, it has to be Rocky Mountain High by John Denver. Excellent. Because, like, my grandpa used to play John Denver all the time, and then I grew up in Colorado. So I, I was born in Florida, and then we moved from Florida to Colorado. And when we moved there, like, our anthem for a while was, John, like, Rocky Mountain High because of the Rocky Mountains, obviously. So it just, every time that song comes on, I like stop what I'm doing and I just kind of think about home. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. Um, so going off book for a second, I, um, I host another show uh, and it's mostly for musicians and stuff. Um, but one of the questions is about like the venue that they'd like to play. And as someone from Colorado, um, you, you've been to Red Rock, right? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Red Rocks is, is incredible. Like the acoustics, the vibe, the stadium, like it, it, everything is just incredible. Yeah. Okay. I just, just wanted to ask, um, because it's actually the most popular answer to that particular question of, you know, what, what's a venue that you'd give anything to play is the question. And always, almost immediately it's, oh, I want to play Red Rock. And I'm like, I, yeah, yeah, yes, you do. Yeah, no, it's well, because you have like the orange mountains, you have like, if it's, if the weather's nice, you have like a cool breeze, you have people are running up and down before the concert starts people for work for exercise, because it's Colorado and everybody's fitness <laughs> crazy. They like will run up and down the stairs. And, and then like, usually the concerts, they'll, you'll start gathering people like right before sunset. And like, you're watching this like, Rocky Mountain, like Colorado sunset. And then the acoustics are just incredible. Like it bounces off the rocks and you, it's like, you don't even need amps. It's like, it's just, it's amazing. I saw, I think the last concert I saw there before I moved was John Den, uh, was um, John Mayer. And, and I was like up close and, it, and even John Mayer, like a lot of his songs are acoustic and it's still 
filled the stadium, like, like filled the, it, it was, it was, it was awesome. I, I guess you can tell like why people would say. Yeah. That. I saw, um, oh, I forget who it was, uh, but it was like five years ago. Uh, they were, uh, they're an EDM group and just, it was, it changed my entire life. Like that was, Oh, seeing yeah. them at Red Rock just yeah. could not have been better. Yeah, especially an EDM group, because that that would be like that would just that, like the, the acoustics would just bring out whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. There was like I I felt like there was music bouncing off the sky. Like yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. where I was. Yeah, like seeing like something like Odessa there or some like something that like is impactful anyway, but then you have those acoustics that would just be life changing. Yeah. What is the greatest love song of all time? I have to go with foreigner. I have to go with, I want to know what love is. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. It's going to be stuck in my head all day, but Hey, right? I'll allow there, it. You there you go. I'll allow it. <laughs> What is the song that defined your generation? I think the song that defined my generation has to be Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve. Fuck yes, it was. Yeah, because it's like, it's such a great song. It was everywhere. It was on that movie Cruel Intentions, which like was like one of my favorite movies when I was younger. And I just feel like it, it, that's, yeah, it has yeah. to be. And that song is still everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Like definitely has stood the test of time. In your opinion, what is the greatest song ever written? Just because of who I am as a person and like, I love, so I like, I'm an actor and I also have a production company and I try to produce content that you know, it is like positive and that I'm putting positive messages out in the world. So in lieu of that, I would say the greatest song ever written is Imagine by John Lennon. Excellent answer. Yeah. Excellent. And coincidentally, the first time it's ever been mentioned. No That's way. That's the answer I to this question. I yeah. I can't believe that. Yep. This is this is the fourth season of this show that I've done, and that is the first time that "Imagine" by John Lennon has been the answer to this question. Well, I am proud to represent the John Lennon lovers of the world. Well done, gold star, sir, gold star. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take it. What is the song that you could listen to over and over again and never get sick of? Can I have two answers? Absolutely, you can. Okay, the first one is Stargazing by Kygo. Excellent. Um, and Justin Gesso, just because like every time, it's like one of those songs that like I don't seek out. And then when it comes on, I drop everything and I'm like, ah, I, I'm going to listen to it again. Just be, It's just so beautiful. It just makes you feel like there's, you're just so like connected to something so much greater than yourself. I just love it for so many reasons. And then I would be lying if I didn't include Taylor Swift love story. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Because like, I mean, like, I, I think she was like a, like 16 or 15 or 17 or whatever when she wrote it, but it's so pure and it's so sweet. And it's like one thing that I think has made Taylor Swift so successful is that she just writes from her soul and so many people can like see themselves in her lyrics. And every time that song comes on, I'm like, you know, it's just so simple and sweet. And like, who, who doesn't want to be swept up in a love story like that? Absolutely. And, you know, I'll be the first to admit that like when Taylor first kind of broke out, like I was one of those people because everybody liked her. I was like, well, I have to dislike her because, mm -hmm. you know, everybody loves her. And then 1989 came out and somebody bought me a copy of it as a joke. And I listened to it. And then I was like, well, shit, now I have to listen to all her stuff because this is all really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the, it's, it's just her lyrics. She's like the, the, the cute Bob Dylan of our generation in terms of like the music's good, but the lyrics are just fucking fire, yeah. you know? I yeah. like that. You should, 
you should pitch that to her as like that that she's the cute Bob Dylan of our time. Like, <laughs> yeah. I hope I hope that she would take that well and not be insulted. But I feel like that's a compliment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this next question um, tends to be the most controversial of the entire set. Um, people people have very very strong opinions um, okay. about this. What is the greatest music video of all time? Okay, so I have to include this person on my playlist, like my mixtape, in some way. And this, I think this just happens to be the answer for it because like, I think a mixtape would not be, would not be complete without this person. And it just, I mean, I, I would find it hard to argue this answer. So I think the greatest mi music video of all time is Thriller by Michael Jackson. That is the most popular answer to this question. Oh, really? Dang it. Yeah. All right. Now I have to think of something else. Now it's okay. You know, it, it means that we're all right. The people that, yes. it means we all get a gold star. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, there, are, there are people who have not mentioned Michael Jackson on this question, and I have gotten emails about it. And people are like, why, why didn't you correct them? It's like, because it's not my place to correct them. That's funny. Oh, like, like random listeners will feel so strongly about this that they uh -huh. will email you about not <laughs> bringing yeah. up Michael Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, everybody listening, uh, we're, that's on the Michael Jackson team. Like I'm, I'm giving you a hug. We're in this together kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. What is the greatest musical collaboration of all time? All right. So just because you're saying of all time, I feel like I need to give you another like two answer. Okay. Yeah. Is that, is that allowed? Am I going to get Absolutely. That? Okay. Yeah. So the first one, just because I feel like this is such a great like example of somebody who's been an artist through and through and just been so successful, then combining forces with somebody that's a bit newer and, you know, coming out with their, like their own flavor um and and doing it in a way that's not like gimmicky or or cheapening either of their like who they are as artists i think elton john and dua lipa cold heart excellent my first answer and then for all of all of those same reasons it has to be my second answer has to be faith by dolly parton and Gal galantis excellent yeah both fantastic answers thank you thank you I hope you don't get any emails getting from those answers. <laughs> like, no, I think you should be good. Okay. All right, cool. What is the song that... No, wait, that's not the right question. I went too far. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we are. Okay. If you could have a song play anytime you entered a room, what would it be? Okay, this, there's only one answer for me to this one. And if anybody disagrees, I don't even care. I'm staking, I'm, I'm staking my claim. I'm flagging the sand. Uh, Van Halen jump. Yes, that's amazing. Because those piano, like that, like piano opener, like who doesn't, who wouldn't want to walk into a room with that every time? That's, this is absolutely true. Um, and funny enough, uh, that is actually when, before I start uh, each season of the show, I go through and I build out a playlist based on my answers to the questions. Uh, Jump by Van, Van Halen is uh, my number two answer for that question. Can I ask you what your number one is? It's uh, the Flash Gordon theme song by Queen. Ah, okay. Okay, well, you can't argue anything. By <laughs> you can't really, I can't argue that. Yeah. So yeah. see, we are, we are best friends, Mike Manning. Yeah, we're best friends. We're best friends. I'm, I'm sending you a hug over the airways. Hell yeah. What is the song? Back to the question I was asking five minutes ago. Uh, um, what is the song that no matter like what kind of vibe you're going for, no matter what kind of playlist you're building, this song will always make an appearance? It is Eminem without me. 
Excellent. All right. Yeah. Because I feel like it's just like if you're sad, it pumps you up. If you're angry, it helps you get through your feels. If you're, it's just like whatever it is. It's like, yes, I'm an M. I feel you. You're saying, you're speaking my language. <laughs> what is the best song for a road trip? Um, this would have to be Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. Excellent answer. Excellent answer. Yeah. It's one of my mom's favorite songs. My dad would sing that. My mom has brown eyes. We would all, my dad, my brother, and I would always sing that to my mom. I love that. Yeah. So it has like that little like sentimentality to it. Yeah. What is one song that you would give anything to see played live? So people that are listening are going to think that I'm saying this because of the recent movie, but this would have been my answer six months ago before the movie came out. Uh, Elvis Presley can't help falling in love. I love that. Like he's known as the King and he had like his Vegas shows were legendary. So like, of course I would want to go to Vegas. I would want to see him at the top of his game, like Elvis Presley perform. That's amazing. So we have come to the final question. Um, you are at the gates of whatever kind of afterlifey type thing that you believe in. Um, and before they'll let you in, they're making you a lovely gift basket. There's some muffins and some HOA type paperwork that you can worry about later. Um, but they are also making a mixtape of your life. Now, Mike Manning, my new best friend, the most important question that you will answer in this time that we have spent together, what is the first song on that mixtape? Oh, man, the way you phrased it. Because I had like a clever, I think I, I was going to say something clever when you were asking that question, but now I might have to change my answer. Um, what was the clever answer? My clever answer was Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Because that nice. feels like I'm at the gates of heaven and it's like afterlife mixtape, you know, or like, a, or, or like a play on words, like a running up that hill, Kate Bush, because it was like a deal with God was the original name before they changed it. You know, like, hey, God, like, give me, like, <laughs> let me in kind of thing. Those were going to be my clever answers. But if it's, like, my mixtape of my life that, like, has something to do with who I am, I would say it's Smash Mouth All-Star. Fuck yes, it is. Yeah, yep, yep. I love that. And it's actually perfect that you didn't go with the clever answer because those two answers have been given before smash mouth all-star has never been said yeah that was so so like side whatever uh little caveat um so when we when i was growing up my buddy in in college we would speak lyrics sometimes like we would be in like a bar or in like at dinner or whatever and we would just start talking lyrics to each other uh like it was normal conversation and smash mouth was our favorite song to do that with so i'd be i'd be like going up to him and like we wouldn't tell anybody so they would have no idea what was going on so i'd be up to him and i'd be like dude like somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me and he would be like wait i ain't the sharpest tool in the shed and I'll be like, and I'll be like, I'm telling him a story. I'll be like, yeah, she was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb and she had the shape. And he goes, oh no, of an L on her forehead. And we're just like having this random conversation. And we would do that with different songs. We do that with Eminem sometimes, Jay-Z, whatever. And, uh, and like people would just be so confused and Smash Mouth was our, was our go-to. That's fucking fantastic. <laughs> that is the best thing that I have heard all day. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I aim to please. So uh, we are at the end of the show. If there is anything uh, that you would like to plug, if you've got something coming up, or if you want to give the folks listening at home and all over the world uh, your social media handles, you are more than welcome to do that right now, sir. 
Yeah. So my social handles are just Mike Manning. If you just type that in, um, I think there's like an underscore on one of them, but you'll figure it out. Uh, it's just Mike Manning. And then my website is Mike Manning info. Uh, so I keep everybody updated on projects and stuff. I have some pretty cool things coming out. So um, I can't wait to share them with everybody. Excellent. Um, thank you so much for being here and taking time out of your day and being the my very first Emmy winning guest and my new best friend. And, you know, if you ever want to come back, you know, if you've got something coming out, I'll we'll we'll drum up some new questions and uh, have you over. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Greg. This is this is great. I mean, I love music, if you can't tell, and you clearly do. And uh, yeah, we're, we're new best friends. So we have to go see uh, next. The next one we'll do in person at Red Rocks. And oh, yeah, we will. Yeah, there, there is. This has been a Rod Wharton production in association with Spring Break 83 Entertainment. All rights and trademarks reserved. No portion of this podcast shall be reproduced commercially without explicit consent.